so first one is amplitude so amplitude we have already seen the distance traversed by the system from its mean position so amplitude here you know, maximum amplitude or maximum displacement the, of this any system from its mean position should be calculated so if you know the maximum amplitude then uh, we can you know, take some precautions so, you know, in terms of providing damping to this system so that it will absorb the vibration and uh, it would never allow the system to reach that maximum amplitude to calculate amplitude we have already seen the procedure to cal procedure to form the equation of motion so in terms of x so if you know x of t automatically we can calculate the amplitude at a different to time because the amplitude is not constant it's not constant actually in the ideal situation the amplitude should be always constant but because we are not applying any external force but in reality the air itself is um, uh, you know providing lot of external resistance to the free vibration so automatically even though without any damping it will the vibration will die down after a certain period of time and next one is a time period we already know that uh, omega t equal to theta here theta for example in this case theta is this one so what is the theta from a uh, to again is the a that is a 2 pi that is 360 degrees so 2 pi so in a in a one cycle so time period t this is the time period t equal to 2 pi into by 2 pi by omega so this omega is the angular velocity of the system so how to calculate this angular velocity we know from the previous equation from the previous equation we have seen x double dot plus so omega square into x equal to 0 so this is the you know, angular velocity of the system so uh, this is a generalized equation and uh, when we go further we develop a lot of um, equation of motion for different types of systems so when we develop the system we compare that particular equation with this standard equation so uh, when we compare whatever the quantity before x can be treated as the angular velocity of the system so that's why we calculate angular velocity and then the third one is the frequency so the frequency is uh, nothing but a number of cycles per second be written as n or f you know it's depending on your convenience so here in gen here the within a time period t how many cycle one cycle because that's what is the definition so time period is nothing but the time taken to complete one cycle and uh, that means if a t t seconds it's completing only one cycle and uh, how many cycles it, it will complete in one second one second how many cycles for example it's a n cycle so automatically what how, how it can be correlated with the proportionality so n by 1 equal to 1 1 second by t seconds so that means n equal to r omega equal to 2 pi n 2 pi n r 2 pi f you can write in any way where f is in hedge so that's uh, written like this and uh, here omega we already know the angular velocity units are radian per second because how many radians because theta is uh, measured in theta now so how many radians it's covering in a time we have already seen that you know omega n can be calculated that means the natural frequency of our natural angular velocity of the system can be calculated by comparing with the previous equation the standard equation differential equation that we have derived in the previous session but you know if the system is you know provided with some other velocity omega and uh, if this velocity approaches the natural natural omega then the system starts vibrating virulently with a maximum amplitude so when resonance occurs at a maximum amplitude when system is moving or rotating you know, rotating with a velocity that is equivalent to the omega n so that's what called as a resonance if omega is greater than omega n also sometimes it's not so dangerous because even in that case this maximum amplitude I, I, here I will I would say capital Y. 
capital A maximum amplitude may not be maximum even in this case when omega is greater than omega n but when omega equal to omega n automatically amplitude become maximum after uh, learning all this what we understood is first of all we need to come up with a uh, equation of motion for any vibrating system so if you find out the equation of motion then automatically you can find out the amplitude and uh, time period and then of course the frequency and everything so that uh, we can take some precautionary measures to reduce the uh, vibration effect but how to find out the equation of motion we use different method and generally we use newton second law that means it's a simply simply equating the forces different forces in a system that is uh, you know nothing but f equal to mg here the acceleration due to the vibration this is a vibrating acceleration and the forces are equated to the name you know oh, m into a this is a linear linear system and if the motion is you know uh, rotational so we have already seen whatever is a linear equivalent rotational can be written as in case of f it's a moment in case of m it's a moment of inertia i and uh, here acceleration if the linear acceleration here automatically angular acceleration that is a theta double that and uh, what is the momentum momentum equal to again force into force cross l actually whenever i use a cross that means it's a cos component whenever cos component is a perpendicular distance so force into force multiplied by perpendicular distance where perpendicular distance from where about you know whatever point we consider the moment so we need to take the perpendicular distance from that moment point to the force acting energy method in energy method we know that you know uh, energy neither created nor destroyed but only can be converted from one form to another form but always this at any if you take at any point this energy total energy is always constant so we you make use of that concept for example in let's say total energy t equal to generally in moving components this is mainly kinetic energy plus the potential energy because our physics we are going to take only mechanical components in parts generally ke and pe potential energy so this is a constant so and if you differentiate actually when you derive this kinetic energy and potential energy of a system moving system then these equations can be derived in a some variable that variable automatically is a depending on the temp time so if you differentiate this total energy with respect to time it automatically becomes zero because this is a constant so it becomes zero so we make use of this concept and we try to derive some of the equation of motion of here in energy matter i would like to consider one more example to um, explain how exactly we calculate so for example i will take a rotational so uh, and um, before going to here in a linear linear motion uh, something ke ke equal to half m square and in rotational or rotational half i omega square and uh, potential energy pe equal to mg h actually mg h but sometimes it's a delta h instead of h why because um, if you start from the rest and uh, you, after some time you achieve some velocity v that means initially your kinetic energy is zero but after some time it uh, attain some velocity v but uh, this potential energy will decrease that time why because we gain the kinetic energy at, at the expense of the potential energy so in that case we 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 should use delta h in its stuff h well, i would like to explain the same from this example here this uh, rod is you know suspended from this point go and um, initially this is at the you know rest position without any um, movement and i have given a um, certain movement for this one rod and this is a center of gravity c cg and uh, this has reached this position and the center of gravity is uh, here center of gravity in mean and this this has given a angular uh, you know displacement theta theta is very small 
and uh, this is since this is rotating about point o here kinetic energy kinetic energy equal to what is the kinetic energy here of i what is i i is not about center of gravity but uh, about the point o actually this rod is moving about the o so wherever you know or whichever about about which point is rotating we need to take uh, you no know, um, kinetic i about that point so here moment of inertia about o into theta theta dot square because of omega square and uh, here pe how to cal calculate pe pe is delta h m m g delta h so here we need to find out delta h why delta h at the initial position when the rod is at the rest there is no theta dot or there is no movement when we have given theta displacement that movement has gained kinetic energy at the expense of potential energy so that means we need to calculate the delta h here and this is the center of gravity i call it as a and uh, this is the b and in the new position it came like this and the center of gravity came to here a dash and if i draw some perpendicular uh, let's say this is a c o and uh, i need to calculate delta h that is the uh, the change in height of the center of gravity that is nothing but uh, ac so how to calculate ac for example oc equal to l by 2 and uh, oa dash also sorry oa oa equal to l by 2 and oa dash also l by 2 and uh, what is ac ac equal to oa minus uh, oc but oc can be calculated from the triangle oc a dash because ye ca dash is perpendicular to oa dash and this is a theta so oc equal to l by 2 or oa dash of cos theta that is a l by 2 cos theta and um, here we know oc oa and oc also so ac equal to oa is nothing but l by 2 here oc equal to l by 2 into cos theta so if i take l by 2 outside l by 2 into 1 minus cos theta so this is how this is the procedure to calculate delta h this is nothing but delta h so we can substitute this delta h in this one 